Okay. Um, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a little bit of background about me. Um, I worked for Sun for uh, quite a while, um, initially in what was called Sustaining Group and uh, then in the Kernel Development Group. Uh, I actually worked on Zones. I didn't work on ZFS while I was at Sun or Oracle, but um, I, I then um, kind of joined again, well, kind of left and came back again, as happens with a number of people at Sun, and joined in a pre-sales role, was very, very heavily involved in ZFS from that point uh, on. And I use it myself at home and uh, speak to lots of customers who use it. So, also I'm sort of very interested in it and uh, trying to make you all very interested in it as well. Um, so I work for Next Center at the moment, one of the companies that uses ZFS, and I'll talk about various of the, the companies that use ZFS and I'll go through it. Uh, if you've got any questions, shout out, it makes it more interesting. Um, I'm a bit deaf, so you might want to put your hand up to me. Thank you. Um, ZFS history. Started in uh, 2001 with uh, a couple of developers. Um, in fact, it was probably around, I think it was around October 2001 when the first, um, very first sort of inklings of the code were actually running uh, in user space, <coughs> not in the kernel at that point. Um, 2005, kind of saw the, the release of Solaris 10, um, and we open sourced a lot of, um, uh, of, we, I was at Sun at the time, we open sourced a lot of the material of Solaris 10 in 2005. ZFS itself followed on in uh, update 2. Um, so it wasn't quite ready at the, the initial release of um, uh, Solaris 10. Um, we, then we start to see people using it externally. So I think one of the first um, external implementations of it using the, um, the open source code was uh, FreeBSD. And around about the same time, a number of companies um, started producing products. The first one that I remember was Greenbytes. I'm not sure if it was absolutely the first one. Um, that was also the, the time that Centre was also around about that same time, and it's possible that various of the others were. I don't know the dates of all of the companies that use ZFS when they actually release products, but that was, that was kind of quite key. Um, around about two, th well, um, somewhere halfway um, through 2010, uh, after Oracle uh, acquired uh, Sun, the source was forked. So Oracle uh, has got its own uh, source code path now, ZFS. And uh, there's the, the open source uh, path of ZFS, which uh, basically became known as the Lumos. So the, what was left of the open Solaris part, um, three or four other companies that were sort of heavily involved in that, took that and put that back together um, into something that could be fairly easily built. Um, and that's what formed the Lumos. So Lumos kind of became a successor. In Solaris, there are a number of what are called consolidations. They're just basically completely separate groups of code that are brought together to form the whole of Solaris. And there's this consolidation called ON, which stands for OS and Networking, um, which is basically the kernel and all the networking stack, and probably half the commands that are in BIN. Um, and that's where ZFS lives. Um, that, in the open source world, has kind of become in Lumos. So, just a comparison, there are some of the other consolidations of things like the, the X server, um, the admin install um, consolidations. They're, they're kind of completely different parts of the code base maintained by different people. Um, probably the, the, the sort of, it's not mentioned on there, but Open Indiana was this kind of the first uh, attempt at putting together a distribution. Uh, there are now oh, probably 10 or more distributions of, um, uh, of what was Open Solaris all emphasizing different things. Open Indiana kind of carries on trying to do desktop, laptop, and server, kind of everything the same way that Open Solaris did. Some of the others, like OmniFs, um, actually concentrate rather more on the server side and not so much on the, you know, don't, don't have the sort of desktop tools. Uh, some of them also uh, just geared around building appliances or building cloud environments. So that there's you know, quite, a, quite a breadth there of, of different uh, Solaris releases. Sorry, follow-ons to open Solaris um, out, out there, you, which you can find very easily if you search on the internet. Um, ZFS on Linux came along a little bit later. In fact, the first implementation of ZFS on Linux was a user space implementation that ran on top of Fuse. Um, a separate uh, 
native uh, implementation of the Z of Epsilon and Linux, uh, actually kind of GA at the beginning of this year. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, what we were finding, um, as we start to see, particularly the, the FreeBSD and the ZFS on Linux as kind of um, key um, branches off of the Illumos, is that they were doing a lot of work and not, not all of that was feeding back in. And there was, a, there was quite a risk that these would diverge off into separate, you know, almost separate implementations, which nobody wanted. So this is kind of what drove um, the initiative to form a project called OpenZFS which is to make sure all these come back together. And that's in the interest of you know, all of the parties involved. So that was kind of something that everyone wanted to do. So mostly I'm going to talk about this OpenZFS, which is the, the, as you say, the open source branch from this fork and where it's gone and how it's got there and, and where it's planning to go next. But that sort of gives you some idea of the, um, the history of how, how we got to where we got to. So, so OpenZFS is a community project. Um, it's bringing together the uh, ZFS uh, implementations in Illumos, which itself has got you know, a lot of companies working on it. Uh, it's for the <coughs> Linux, and just recently the Mac uh, implementation has kind of joined in as well. Um, they haven't got code shipping from this yet. I'll talk a little bit about the Mac situation uh, in a moment. So the goals very much are to sort of drive the um, awareness of ZFS, um, how we get the how we get the people who want to be involved producing quality code that works across all of the um, platforms, um, encourage communication about what's going on. That's why I'm talking to you about Open ZFS. There have been talks in the states and, and a few other places. Uh, the initiative kind of came together a few months ago, so we're we're kind of ramp ramping that up. Um, Sure, consistent reliability, make sure we took as far as possible, we do things the same way. So there are, there are a few examples at the moment of things that have kind of been done differently in the Linux space and the FreeBSD space and, and the Lumos space hasn't actually quite worked, decided how to do it yet, but it's trying to bring those back together so they're all the same. So where are we based? Um, there's a website, open-zfs.org. Uh, you can find a lot of information there. It's kind of wiki-based. Um, there's a mailing list, uh, again, which you point to from the, from the website. Um, that's a kind of platform-independent mailing list for ZFS. Each of the platforms has got its own one as well. So there's a you know, ZFS on Linux platform uh, mailing list is quite lively. Uh, I haven't looked at FreeBSD, but I expect that's the same with that. Uh, and the Illumos one's quite lively as well. So, we're looking to simplify the development process. Um, OpenSolaris itself was a, a real pig for anyone to do anything with unless you were inside Sun or inside Oracle, where frameworks were already set up to build all the different um, consolidations. They were built in different ways. Some of them built using you know, the Sun Studio tools, some of them built using GCC. Uh, the tools used for source control varied enormously between them. Um, if you're coming for, as a as sort of open source developer and you want to go in and you want to do something, this that's just kind of a non-starter. So a lot of the work that was done in the early days of Illumos was actually kind of simplifying getting it all together. We've still got issues of building cross-platform. Um, so Linux kernel uses different compilers from Cyrus kernel. It uses different versions of C. Um, that sort of thing. So there are some issues to be sorted out there. Uh, creating cross-platform test suites. So the test suites um, for ZFS uh, ran under originally something <coughs> called STF, um, a, a test framework inside Sun. That's kind of been moved now into a more open framework, makes it easier to run. It means that you know you can run it if you're not somebody that once worked at Sun, which was pretty much the prerequisite for running the old STF tests. Um, looking at reducing code differences between platforms. Uh, another initiative that's kind of started off uh, together with um, the Open ZFS is something called Office Hours. At least it's Office Hours <coughs> in the States. It's, not, it's in the evening if you're in this country, but it's still called Office Hours. And that's just a session where um, a number of the uh, ZFS experts, people like Matt Ahrens and George Wilson, uh, open up a session where anyone can ask some questions. And if 
If there's a lack of questions, they'll just carry on talking about what they're working on at the moment. And that is very interesting to join in. Um, that's quite new. There are not a lot of people on it yet, but um, it's, I think the next one's due to run in January, so they've done two so far. Um, well, certainly, it, you know, if you're interested in what's going on in ZFS, that's a very good, uh, very good thing to join. You'll find that details that on the Open ZFS uh, website. So, talk about some of these. So, the, the different sort of platform diversity we've got. Obviously, there's the Lumos, which was the, which is the uh, the OpenStars code base, um, which has moved on from the point where it forked. So, there's a number of. Uh, None of these complete this, by the way, but there's a number of sort of key players working there. Delphix, Joint, um, Omni TI do the, uh, the server-based distribution. Um, Next Center that I work for doing appliance. Um, if you look on the Linux side, so the ZFS on Linux um, work was originally done by Lawrence Livermore um, for their uh, supercomputer. And that, uh, that work, was actually just looking at providing a foundation to run Lustre on. So they were actually only in initially interested in the uh, ZVOL support, which is the kind of block level support in ZFS, not the ZFS file system support. And uh, they produced the underlying ZFS port onto Linux. Uh, Sun did, um, did some of the Lustre work to make that run on top of that. Um, that work's kind of gone off now because uh, Lustre moved through companies. It went through a company called Wham Cloud, um, which is now owned by Intel. So I guess I don't know if Intel still do development there, but Intel kind of owns the, the Lustre framework now. Um, there are some of the distributions that produce ZFS packages, uh, which you can uh, you know, add, add to your, uh, your Debian. You can install ZFS on there. Can run that. Those are kind of maturing. Uh, I think you can actually now boot and do things like boot environments off those some of those um, packages. And uh, there are vastly more there. But if you if you go to something like um, Open Storage Conference, you'll find loads and loads of startup companies basing work on top of ZFS on Linux. It's kind of really popular. Um, FreeBSD. So that was kind of the first open source port outside of Solaris. That's you know really mature now. FreeBSD is you know ZFS is a is a key player in that space. The Mac implementation has had very various issues o over the time. There there was an early one um, called Mac ZFS, which kind of, if my understanding of the history is correct, that kind of sort of dwindled away because Apple themselves then started producing a ZFS distribution. Um, they didn't get the kind of agreement that they were after out of Sun for supporting that. Um, partly because Sun was in the process of being acquired. So they kind of moved away from that. But the team that did that then went off uh, into a separate company, which was eventually acquired by Greenbytes and turned into a product called Zevo from Greenbytes. Um, that product seems to have sort of come to the end of its life. I don't think there's any announcement, but the, the people using it were not seeing much from Greenbytes anymore. And that's kind of spurred folks to go back and look at the Mac ZFS. So there's now another project that's come out of that, which is called ZFS OS X. I don't think it's shipping any software yet, but that is based very much on the Open ZFS project. So that should bring the Mac implementation uh, up to spec with the, you know, up to, up to date with the current uh, Open ZFS. But the Green Bytes and the Mac ZFS uh, implementations were a long way behind that. So that's still activity in progress. There's some figures along the bottom here. You can see sort of number of contributors and a num number of commits over a 12-month period. Um, this word of warning, it's a bit difficult to compare those. Um, so the Illumos um, code base works very much the way we did it in Sun, which was, you know, you have to be absolutely complete, tested, and everything before you get to commit anything back to the, to the code. So you see relatively few commits, but those are probably, you know, absolutely complete, tested and ready to go. Other distributions don't work the same way, so you, you may see the same amount of work going over, you know, four or five commits. Um, so you can't compare them directly, but it's really just to give an example of how active they are. I did have another figure for 2012, just for the, the Linux distribution. 
So the whole of 2012 kind of represented the really big slog to get that working. And it was actually 750 commits over that 12-month 12, um, 12 period. Uh, so